Oh, hey, Sam. Hey, guys. How's it going? Oh, great. How's everything with you guys? We're doing it's awesome. It's good. It's good. It's uh, great to have you on. I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to hop on today. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Thanks for having us. Um, so I guess like, let's just kick it off. Let's roll right into it. Um, I'd love to, I'd love you guys to take a second and introduce yourselves. Um, a little bit about what you guys did previously before Quant Base, and then we can dive into all about Quant Base. So I guess uh, Sam or Thomas, if you guys want to take it away. Sure. Uh, hey guys, um, thanks for uh, inviting us on uh, on this live. I'm Sam. I'm our chief investment officer. And so kind of in the past, I've, I've worked a variety of roles, uh, started off as, a, as an analyst at a, at a quant firm, uh, and then kind of worked my way up the ranks to uh, portfolio manager. Uh, so I've, in my past, I've managed a, a small uh, portfolio of a couple million dollars, grew it by uh, about 100% IRR uh, in, a, in about a year. So got some, so, some uh, great ex investment experience under my belt. And then uh, I actually left uh, last year to start quant base with Thomas. And uh, Thomas, you want to give a quick intro? Yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you all. Uh, so I'm CEO at QuantBase. Uh, before QuantBase, I spent a few years doing particle physics research, uh, but always had a love for high-risk investing. I was actually implementing a lot of uh, quant investing papers myself, uh, and then switched over from physics to business and finance, uh, sold a company, started a few other profitable ones, and yeah, just been working on QuantBase since. And Essentially, like I said, you know, I have implemented a lot of these strategies already, but it was just a realization that, you know, other people want this same kind of access and really just making it available is the transition. So I would say your guys' accolades are just insane. <laughs> your backgrounds are wild. Um, so I guess QuantBase is the first SEC registered high risk robo advisor, which is pretty wild. Um, do you mind breaking down what exactly QuantBase actually is, you know, and uh, what steps did you take to get here? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So like you said, yeah, world's first SEC registered robo-advisor for high-risk investing. Uh, and what that kind of means in a nutshell is we offer fully automated smart portfolios like Betterment or Wealthfront, but specifically for high-risk investing that's focused on leverage investing, quantitative investing, sentiment investing, alternatives like crypto, fine art, NFTs, you know, making these all uh, fully automated, super easy to use, minimum investment of $50. And you can put it in a portfolio that's been optimized by the latest quantitative investing techniques and let it run, build your wealth. Pretty cool, pretty cool. <laughs> so I got a question here. I appreciate you guys hopping on. So I think about you guys, it's, so from like an advisory perspective, it sounds like almost like a kind of like a separately managed account in a way where maybe it would be a supplement to a core strategy or do you guys see yourself primarily as a primary strategy for someone that's uh, trying to go about building wealth uh, in the markets right now? Yeah, so that's exactly what it is. It's a separately managed account. So, you know, you can, uh, you can think of it as like an ETF where like, you know, you, you put in your money and uh, direct ownership of, uh, of the asset, uh, whether it's crypto, stocks, uh, whatever else. And yeah, like the way we think about QuantBase is, it's really the, the 15 to 20 percent of your money that's reserved for high risk. Right. So like yeah. we, we're not looking to be like the replacement for Vanguard uh, or, you know, for your for your normal ETF uh, S&P strategies. But, uh, you know, we want to be the, the home for like the, the 20 percent of your of your wallet that like you want to work, you know, harder than everything else for you. Right. So uh, that, that's the, the new age, uh, the, the new class of assets and, you know, new strategies and what have you. And, yeah, the, the way we kind of think about it in the full picture is. You know, Vanguard has like a subset of the assets that are out there. And if you really want to make a fully optimized portfolio, you need to take advantage of the full range of assets. That's including cryptocurrency, including NFTs. Uh, this it's it's basic uh, modern portfolio theory, so to speak. Uh, you know, Nobel Prize winning uh, investment thesis, and that is you can take advantage of diversification and all the whole universe of assets and make a much stronger portfolio as a result. So yeah, we're, we're a part of your portfolio. We're not the full thing, but it's a very important part that makes a, a stronger portfolio overall. Yeah. Um, I guess in the simplest way possible, could you explain what quantitative investing is for people that like are unfamiliar with it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love talking about this. So, um, you know, when you think about like normal investing, you might think, Oh, like, you know, uh, 
you, you saw like a, a stock on CNBC, you buy it on Robinhood, or you know, you, you saw like uh, somebody you're familiar with, like talk about a company that you like, uh, and you buy that stock. Uh, quantitative investing is much more portfolio based. So it's, it's never really, you know, I want to buy the stock because I think it's good. Uh, but rather, you know, I, I look at a, a range of factors, like, uh, let's say I look at the universe of 1000 stocks in the US. And then I, I rate them based on their momentum, their returns of the past, like X months, their size, their profitability, and like, you know, several other factors. And then what we do is, you know, you, you rank uh, the thousand stocks based on all those factors that you rated them on. And essentially, you want to get your, your top, you know, 50, 100 stocks based on that ratings, uh, based on those ratings and create a portfolio out of those. So when we think about quantitative investing, it's a lot more obviously quantitative in the name, right? So it's a lot more numbers based and factor based rather than just like stock picking. Yeah, and many ways techniques. So at getquantbase.com where we live, uh, we have a blog post actually that Sam had worked on. Uh, I'm sure everyone's heard of Jim Cramer. Uh, and Jim Cramer, his portfolio history, I agree. But Sam applied these sort of techniques to make an inverse Jim Cramer uh, that actually does really, really well. Um, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I was looking into that. The inverse Jim Cramer portfolio looks absolutely hysterical. Um, I guess in a little bit we can uh, dive into how you guys go about uh, aggregating all of that data and everything to be able to roll out a portfolio like that. But uh, one thing I want to touch on was when I was doing some research about you guys beforehand, scrolling through the Twitter and everything, I had saw a tweet that you had posted about how investors today like need to basically restructure their portfolio entirely differently as like say. Um, 10, 20 years ago to basically be able to um, achieve the same returns as like 8%, which is like market average, like your portfolio needs to be constructed entirely differently. I want to know if you could give us some more color into that tweet and everything. Yeah, like uh, you read that report too. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? Not, not. <laughs> yeah. so, you know, in, the, in the 90s, if I wanted to get 8% return, what I'd have to invest in were, you know, like bonds or like US government bonds. And so What's interesting about that is if I wanted to get on really low risk, because like, you know, nobody even in the 90s was thinking like the US was going to go down in flames, right? And so bonds were, were, were priced really cheaply. Now, to, if I want to get that return, I have to invest it in like the stock market, into crypto, into like, and like big institutions have to invest in and then venture capital, hedge funds. There's so many other things you have to do. And that comes with a lot of just like volatility, like, a, like, huge upturns, huge downturns. And so it's a lot harder to get that 8% return today. And then what we did, what Thomas and I did was we looked at the past like century of data. Uh, the, the S&P has had about 8% annualized return since, you know, 1928. If we even get like half of that for the next 50 years, so just 4% annualized return, the stocks in the S&P would have to have a total market cap of like 40 quadrillion dollars. We're in the tens of trillions, which is which is huge, but like you know, it's just like a right. crazy amount of factors from from here to there. And so the thesis that Quantbase is based on is, if I want to get those eight percent returns in the future, I can't just be investing in an S and P ETF. I can't just be on like those uh, on Vanguard or whatever. I need to invest in alternatives, and you know, crypto is one of them. NFTs are are, are getting more and more popular as an actual asset class. Then you've got like, you know, prediction markets, art, wine. That's really uh, where Quantbase hits its stride. Like that's the, that's not alone with like what the S&P has to be worth, like will, could be worth in the next 50 years is very scary if you think about it as like a regular investor, because it's like we lean so much towards the S&P is like, oh, that's just fine. If you want to be hands off, hands off. And it's like you're you're not going to be able to do that in say 25 years from now because those returns aren't aren't there. Right, they're, right. Just, they're just way too large, you know. Right. <laughs> One of the things I think about, like, I think if you ask the average, like, you know, like, you know, uh, investor, like, how do I make money easily, right? All of them are going to be like, invest in the S and P, right? Like, that's what my dad did for for like, you know, twenty, thirty years, but you know, that's not the that can't always be the right answer, and like. One example of that is if you look at the Japanese stock market, the Nikkei, which is their version of the S&P, it is still 35% below its 1989 peak. So what that tells us that, that, you know, if I was invested in the Japanese S&P in 89, 
I still wouldn't be even break even. And then, you know, add inflation on top of that. And like, I'm losing money. Yeah, that's really, really worrisome. Especially like somebody like, I'm assuming like a lot of our audience probably 30s, uh, late 20s, early 20s. And that's just really worrisome because we basically really need to re-strategize our entire portfolios and kind of everything that we've been learning and all this information we've been digesting over these years, like right, right. kind of going out the window. <laughs> and, um, Jose, I know you had a couple of questions that you wanted to ask. In yeah. So I'm just looking at the site here, just getting an understanding of really the logistics of investing through you guys. So see the $50 minimum deposit, no lockups, of course, your SIPC insured, which is cool, SEC registered. Are these funds, are they only available right now in taxable accounts or in something like a tax advantage vehicle like a Roth IRA? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, we, we've gotten a lot of requests for a Roth IRA, and it's something we want to be able to offer in the next uh, we're six weeks. So, but right now, it's fully taxable accounts. Okay. And then uh, as far as suitability, too, that's something that you know, we're big on uh, is, is just understanding uh, who the, really the investor profile that this would make sense for, in your opinion, um, what would you say is this is something that just does not make sense for X type of investor or X investor profile? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, one easy answer to start is uh, if you're in your 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, new retirement, don't. This is not for you. <laughs> yeah, so in a pretty broad age range uh, from 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, it's pretty consistent and uniform. There's no sort of a... Uh, like spike in any one of those age groups. But the biggest characters are like upwardly mobile, people who are working in tech and finance and consulting and you know, who are or, or be there and get there, people who essentially want to retire sooner, retire bigger. Um, yeah, this is a great opportunity for you. Um, one thing I want to touch on. So we live in a time where like investing has never been as accessible as before. I mean, you have countless fintechs popping up that allow you to invest in wine, sports cards, like creators themselves. Um, how do you plan on, I guess, capturing these trends and everything, especially being uh, like considering clients need to, I guess, take on more risk, you know, in, in terms of to, I guess, achieve the same market returns? Like, how do you plan to lean into these alt portfolios? Yeah, that's a really good question. And honestly, I ran into this a couple months ago when, you know, I bought my first NFT uh, back in September. It was a Solana NFT. And things I, I ran into uh, was, like, the idea that, like, there are thousands of, like, NFTs out there, right? And then, like, hundreds of collections, right? So how am I, like, how the heck am I going to choose one that, like, like, choose the best one? Mm -hmm. that's uh what that's when we actually decided hey we really need to make an nft index fund right which is the exact idea of like you know there, there's so many stocks out there i just want to get exposure to, like i think stocks are great so i want to get exposure to stocks as an asset class so that's you know how the s p etf came out now we're doing that for nfts then we're doing that for for art for for wine and, and what have you right so the idea is like yes it is like i think fi fintech today just democratizes investing but there's also just so many choices out there that like, if you want to actually spend the time to do all that research, to, you know, find, evaluate and manage those investments, you have to become a full time investor. Right. And so uh, we at Quantbase are kind of doing that work so that people don't have to be full time investors and still capture it upside. Yeah, that's awesome. So I guess um, in particular with NFTs, I know that there aren't really like indexes out there. There might be a couple that are popping off like. I guess they're all like decentralized though, in yeah. terms of, like the way you have to get access to them. Do you see yourselves creating indexes and maintaining indexes that uh, other, I guess, funds and companies could probably follow along? You guys could be the, I guess, standard for it. Kind of how the standard boards does the uh, S&P 500. <laughs> or do you find yourselves like you're going to track an index or just trade based off of volume or like, I'm, I'm really curious as how you guys plan to. So the way we think about these funds. Yeah, the way we think about that is that there's like in in the traditional financial world, there's like three kind of layers to this. You've got your standard and poor's who like create the index, and you've got like your uh, State Street, uh, BlackRock, which like make them investable, and you've got like your vanguards that distribute them, right? So you got like the the index creators, the fund creators, and the fund distributors. 
originally with Quantbase, we wanted to do all to, to do all three of that, right? But you know, you don't want to spread yourself so thin that like you're not not providing value to any specific person. So where we've kind of found our value here is create is making the things investable. And so yeah, you're right. There are uh, NFT index creators that just track an index. Uh, one, one that uh, comes to mind is like uh, index. Uh, index coop right like they create the the indexes but they don't make them investable and you know what we're doing here is making them investable with just straight like uh invest cash just like you would invest cash on uh, in robin hood awesome awesome um one question i have in, in relation to that uh, i think index co-op actually offered this this i'm still kind of learning more about that side of things but from what i understand one any of their funds that they offer that are either decentralized in nature or have access to crypto assets or metaverse, whatever theme we're talking about. Right, right. And those actually give you real ownership in the underlying asset. Right, right. Just the fund. Are you guys trying to go down that route as well? Or are you primarily just trying to provide the same underlying returns without giving direct ownership of the underlying asset? That's a great question. Um, I think our, our V1 is just capturing the uh, economic returns. But, you know, we, uh, you know, Thomas and I are both so native. So we understand that, like, you know, crypto is much more than just like finance, right? Like there's so many cool things like, you know, there's governors, governance tokens that are coming uh, through with DAOs. There's just so much like the actual ownership of the, of the coin itself gives you outside of the. Right. V2 is definitely giving the actual direct underlying and actually as a as an advisor we actually do get pe like people are direct ownership like have direct ownership of the assets but uh what we're you know, building towards is being able to actually check those in your wallets etc and then as far as the just standard liquidity of trading the funds so for example most etfs index funds or in both cases it usually is t plus two settlement or you guys the same type of deal where you hit buy or sell to trading days or are you guys trying to because one thing i think that DeFi is going to absolutely really really win people on is more quickly settling trades versus having to wait two two business days which in today's world i think is just crazy i remember when i started finance was t plus three t plus two now it's supposed to be a pretty big deal but uh what do you guys think about that is that something you guys are trying to add value on or is that more very type of thing for you guys yeah, I mean, 100%. Our whole mandate is making high-risk investing effortless. Bring there all these technologies that make it easier than ever. That means uh, faster settlements. That means easier access to margin if that's something you're interested in. Um, yeah, overall, you know, at the moment, we still have uh, But that's where we're moving towards is we want to make high-risk investing, you know, whether you're, you're coming from Vanguard and you've never touched any of these and you just want – exposure without having to think about it or you're an expert and you want power tools um, making it as effortless as possible yeah so one of the things that really uh, attracted me to quant base was uh the nancy pelosi portfolio <laughs> <laughs> uh how do you guys go about aggregating this data placing these trades like uh and even like with the jim kramer portfolio like i understand with nancy with like uh, politicians, there's a uh, 13F filing, so they have to like, um, what is it, to say what they're trading and everything within like a certain amount of days. But just like the Jim Cramer stuff, that's like, that's just, you yeah. guys have to manually get all that data. So I'm really interested to hear how this whole process works. Absolutely. Yeah. So we have a blog post on the inverse Kramer uh, index and how we built that. So if anybody watching here wants to check that out, I would just Google quant base inverse Kramer and uh, you'll you'll uh, find kind of the, the whole spiel, right? It's a, it's a fun 15 minute read, if you, ever have, uh, you know, over a morning coffee or something. So yeah, you're right with Pelosi. It's a pretty straightforward, uh, the, the data on all like the congressional trades, you can find that by going to like, if you Google like Congressional Stock Act, something gov, you'll find kind of the, the, the PDF that showcases all that data. And then what we do is we, we kind of take in that data. And then because the uh, Stock Act only gives a range, we have to kind of do some more to uh, create a portfolio based on the tightness of the range. And then uh, for the Kramer index, yeah, you're right. They, uh, it's a lot harder to get that data, rate the kind of, uh, you know, uh, rate the, uh, like 
whatever Kramer's saying about the stocks and then make a portfolio out of that, right? And so kind of what we did here was we, we got kind of a, an aggregation of like all his episodes, right? And then the, there's a way you can kind of like rate his, uh, like we rated his kind of uh, picks from one through five, like five being a strong buy, four being you know, a buy, neutral, sell, strong sell. And what we did was we kind of looked at the returns for every echelon of that, right? So uh, we looked at what returns would be like for all of his strong buys, all of his buys, and so on and so forth. And what we found was just like, even just naively buying all of his sells, so everything he rated number two, beat the market for four years. <laughs> the, the, That's that's crazy. <laughs> last couple of months, it's come back in line with the S and P, but it's you know it's a it's a good portfolio, which is surprising to me. Um, and you know, once you get that aggregated data, you've got to go from like a like not buying all of his cells to being a little bit smarter about it, right? So the way we optimized it was we got rid of like the stocks that have been super volatile in the past like four years, just so you have a you have a portfolio that. Uh, gets returns, but isn't also like like getting those with a lot of risk, um, and just, uh, a few other things like that to to optimize the portfolio. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So um, I see on your website you guys have the percentage of your portfolios invested in high risk investments. So I'm assuming it's with quant base. What funds are you uh, both invested in particularly? Is it all? Are you guys all in on Pelosi's fund? <laughs> I'm a D-Gen, uh, but uh, yeah, a lot of my money is in, uh, I'd say like 5% is in Pelosi, some is in uh, is in Wall Street bets, but like, I'm really, uh, like, none of this is financial advice, by the way, uh, uh, but a lot of money is in the single leveraged uh, fund, that's the uh, Quant-based flagship, and like, I think Thomas too, yeah. right, yeah, yeah, and that just, it, it's just really, it's a really, really cool fund, it's based on this paper, that back tests back like 150 years um, and has showcased like 18%. So the idea of that paper is that uh, is in good times, it's invested triple leverage in the S&P. In bad times, it's invested in bonds. So if you look at kind of the back tests on the site, all of 2008, when the S&P went down like you know 30 or 40%, this fund was in bonds the entire time. So it, it only went down 2%. And then actually just recently, the whole like Russia, Ukraine, the start of that crisis uh, and kind of the, the drawdowns over February, this fund was in uh, was all in bonds. And it actually very recently went back to like the S&P. Wow. So is this, this is the, um, what's his name? Jordan Brooks, right? Is this Jordan Brooks paper? This one is, uh, this one is different. But yeah, the Jordan Brooks paper uh, that we wrote a blog post about is the hedge fund tracker. And that one's coming soon. All right, sweet. I guess uh, if anybody listening wants to learn a little bit more about how the like this one strategy in particular works and uh, just quantitative investing in general, they do a great job explaining it on their blog. So well, the website's getquantbase.com, right? That's right. Yeah. So anybody head over to their blog and give it a read if you definitely want to learn more about quantitative investing. Um Jose, did you want to add the pop-up sticker for questions? Uh, yes. I think that you may have to, or am I, let me see. So you should be able to ask questions at the bottom if they use that <laughs> sticker. All right, hold on. Do you see that your screen? What am I looking for? <laughs> Sorry, guys. This is the first time I've ever <laughs> gone live. Well, second time I've ever gone live. First time around the one. <laughs> so there should be like a little Q&A bubble. Um, so guys, those of you watching the live here, if you have a question, you should be able to just use that Q&A bubble at the bottom uh, to ask the quant base team really anything that we just uh, talked about or anything that you have questions about um, should be right where it says add a comment to the right of it should be a little Q&A bubble. You guys seeing that? Did someone just pop up? Yep. So I just dropped the link to our site in the chat. And asked for All right, sweet. In terms of invest, let's see what questions we have. All right, so I think one that's popped up on here is uh, in terms of investing, like, you know, how do we kind of look at all these universe of assets and like, how do we make our plans for investing, right? Do you have any thoughts on that? So I, I'm kind of taking this as like on quant do you come up with your own plan. So we try, like, like I was saying, 
it is making it as easy and effortless as possible. Uh, so that means we offer pre-built, professionally built, fully back test, tons of data, uh, automated portfolios for you. And we want to give as much data as possible. That's data going back decades, performance history, how it performs uh, in different periods and market conditions, weaknesses, strengths, and everything like that to make it really easy to hone in on what's you're interested in. And during your onboarding process, we do suitability questions and make sure, for one, that you can you you understand the portfolio. You're not going in, you know, in the deep end portfolios, uh, but also you understand you can have high conviction in it and be excited to put your money in. Um, so you don't, you don't build the, the strategy from the ground up. We do a lot of that work for you, and then you can sort of pick concepts. Uh, right. One, one kind of concise way of thinking about it is on Robinhood, you pick your stocks. On Quantbase, you pick your strategies. Right. What I want to add to that is, like, you don't have to, like, trust our stock picking or our asset picking excellence for anything that we do. Like, all the rules, like all the rules that the strategies are based on, they're, you, you know, you click on the details, they're all out there. So there's nothing that we're necessarily hiding. Love it. Uh, let's pull up the next one. Oh, did it disappear or did it? Hold on. There we go. Okay, awesome. <laughs> uh, thank you for the love. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you want to kind of invest in our... Uh, I'd go first to getquantbase.com. Uh, you can invest in any of the funds that we have just uh, online. Uh, you can tell us what funds you want. We have a lot of coming soon ones. So, you know, tell yeah. us which uh, which ones interest you the most. And then do we want to talk about the WeFunder? Uh, actually, crypto is launching this week. So, yeah. uh, you know, we, we already have a bunch of quantitative and sentiment and leverage focus one, but we'll be having uh, crypto coming this week. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, we're launching with uh, with two crypto funds. So we've got the crypto blue chip, which is just kind of easy exposure to like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, uh, and then we've got like uh, a total crypto index, right? And so that exposes you to the top twenty coins in the crypto, uh, mm -hmm. and they're kind of weighted by market cap. But the thing about it, like, is if we weighted everything in, in this by market cap, Bitcoin would get like sixty percent, Ethereum would get like you know thirty five. And just it wouldn't be as interesting. So what we do is we weight it first by market cap and then normalize it, which means that the small coins get a little bit more exposure than uh, than they would if it was just purely based on market cap. And the the way we think about that is like I invest in a crypto index fund because I want exposure to everything in the crypto market. A uh, quick uh, follow question on that on the crypto fund question. So Jose had mentioned earlier Index Cube, and I know that with Index you're able to. I think like redeem the fund token for the like tokens itself like the underlying are you guys going to be doing something similar or how is yeah. that going to work yeah so we aren't uh there's no token in the middle here you own the underlying assets um, oh, wow. yeah awesome awesome oh wow okay we're getting a lot of questions popping up right now <laughs> love to hear it <laughs> all right let's see another one so yeah, that's called an ACATS transfer. We have done that uh, with uh, with a lot of folks. Kind of our, our, our V1 for Quantbase was run on a different broker. Uh, we don't have an option on the site per se, but- uh, Shoot us an email. Yeah, shoot yeah. us an email. So either, you know, Thomas at getquantbase.com, Sam at getquantbase.com. Yeah, just send us an email and uh, we'll take care of you. Yep. Well, okay, let's get in the next one. Oh, response. Here we go. Did it pop up or no? No, I Still the initial question. Um, Sometimes you gotta, uh, I guess, exit out of the question then. Okay, okay yeah. Here we go. <clears throat> so, how do you invest if you don't have an account? That's, yeah, legals are a little bit kind of weird here. We're only available to folks that are, um, you know, living in the U.S. Uh, you don't necessarily need to be an American citizen, but, uh, you know, permanent we do require that. Yeah, yeah, so permanent residency uh, or citizenship. However, we, like, we're a pretty small team, but we, we can expand to other regions. Uh, if you just, you know, let us know you're out there. Go to getquantbase.com, slide down to the bottom, like, scroll down to the bottom, and we have a link for international folks. So, you know, go ahead, click on that link, fill out the form, let us know you're out there.
Awesome. Thank you for that. Um, here we go. Yeah, so fees and costs, right now we're completely free. Uh, we want to make sure, you know, we're providing as much value as possible, better understand what you're kind of looking for and how we can make your high-risk investing as easy as possible. Uh, at the moment, we're planning a, a fee structure of 94 basis points, uh, which compared to some of our comparables, like Grayscale is a- uh, half of Grayscale. Yeah, 2%. Uh, Tight Invest is another one. They're about 1%, so we're a little cheaper than comparable especially when considered that the, the returns of high risk investing are what they are. Um, yeah. Right so, now, the way you pay us isn't feedback. And you know, yeah. we, we think that's fair because we're, we're young and uh, you've, I'm sure people uh, have got a lot of opinions and we want to hear yeah. that. We want um, to. The account minimum, what is that again? $50. 50 bucks. $50. Sweet. Um, here we go. Opinions on Goldman Sachs predicting recession next year. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, there's all kinds of different market conditions that come. The way we think about high risk investing is is it, it isn't just bullish high risk investing. Uh, high risk investing is is taking a chance for higher returns. And so we already have portfolios on the site that are sort of bear market proof, uh, as in they're focused on doing really well in bear markets. Uh, the other stuff we do is stuff like the, the quant based flagship, like Sam was just talking about. That one's dodged a lot of recessions. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's always a, a concern and consideration. Um, but, you know, we we already have a few things in motion to, to make sure that's not an issue. Yeah, like uh, one of the ways I think about it is like, you know, let's say you knew that a recession was going to come tomorrow. How would you personally make money on that recession? I mean, like, recessions are obviously bad, but like, as an investor, how would you kind of make profit on that uh, recession? You'd probably invest in, like, you'd invest in bonds, right? You, you'd put your, your capital in bonds. Or, uh, <clears throat> you know, if you're in the, the crypto market, you might, you know, uh, th there's certain currencies that are, are built to, to inverse track uh, Bitcoin, right? So you'd invest in those. Uh, so taking that kind of intuition, play, we built out, like, we have a few coming soon bear market funds that essentially they're built to make money in a, in a bear market, not just stay flat. So I guess their strategies are comprised of like uh, shorting or using like inverse, uh, well, an inverse bond would still be short, <laughs> but uh, I guess how exactly are you offering um, bear market bonds? Yeah, so uh, a lot of these like, you know, are, st are still being built. So, you know, I, I, I need to look at all the data to you know, give a full answer, but uh, for example, one play might be like investing in like a, a levered version of a of a bond ETF of like a of like a long dated bo a bond ETF. We have okay. yeah that use utilize options. They're buffer funds, so uh, they they kind of your upside and downside. You can go up eight uh, percent, but you can't fall any percent on some of them. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there's also like there's. Uh, you guys have heard of like ETFs, but there's also like ETNs, right? They're like exchange traded notes. And what they do is they give you exposure to like volatility. So uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but there's a, there's something called like the VIX, which just tracks volatility. And so you can buy essentially options that, uh, or you can buy like futures of the, the VIX itself. And so if I knew that a recession was coming tomorrow or like, you know, a big downturn, I'd want to invest in the VIX. And so some of our portfolio they, you know, they, they hedge some of our like leverage returns by also having a part of the portfolio uh, in VIX. Awesome, awesome. So this is actually our uh, last user submitted question right here. Kind of a lob for you guys. <laughs> oh, well, I, I've heard this font base is coming up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Quantbase. I heard Quantbase is a really good platform to check out. I don't know. Lots of people are saying like Quantbase is, is pretty crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh wait! Oh, like, oh wow! They're still rolling in. Hold on. <laughs> All right, let's do one more. Hold out. <laughs> but oh, response could not be shared. 
to give a good faith answer to that question, like obviously we want you to be on Quant Base, but you know, if you're looking for, like, it depends on what you're looking for, right? Like, if you're looking to invest in, in artwork, like Masterworks is great. If you're looking to invest in, uh, like, in, in prediction markets, poly market, et cetera. But uh, if you're looking to just get easy exposure to, to all of these in one platform, like, you know, we, we, we'd love to have you. Yeah, and we have a questionnaire in our, our onboarding where we ask you questions about your goals and interests and, and different, so almost like a personality test uh, when it comes to finance to, to best help you find what what's best for you. Sweet. Um. Hold on, let's. We got one more. I'm sorry about this. This uh Instagram Live feature is really throwing me off. First time user. Uh, since y'all. No. So when we think you know, there's high frequency trading, uh, but none of our portfolios uh, rebalance. You know, reset their allocations any more frequently than once every two weeks. Uh, so we're, we're not trying to be high frequency trading. Uh, we're trying to take advantage of alternative assets of strategies like leverage investing and quantitative investing and sentiment investing. You know, we have like a Wall Street bet sentiment. We have a social media sentiment one that invests in bullish stocks. Uh, so there's a whole world of high risk investing, quote unquote, with crypto and NFTs, and fine art, these kind of untested assets that are really up the next 10 to 15 to 50 trillion dollars in assets coming on online in the market. Um, so yeah, making those available is, uh, is far beyond the world of high frequency trading, uh, but still very, very valuable. Yeah. As far as insurance and market loss, we do have FDIC insurance on cash transfers in the quant base and SIPC insurance on uh, assets and cash in our brokerage accounts. Um, but, you know, any investment comes with loss, uh, you know, there is no insurance for market loss. You, you won't, you won't be able to find that anywhere. And that's because, you know, that's, that's what investing is. Um, yeah. Like one of the portfolios that we're looking to bring on board uh, is uh, like a DeFi yield farming portfolio. And if, if you're familiar with yield farming, uh, oh, thank you for the comment. Somebody said the Pelosi tracker is awesome. I, I agree. Thanks. Um, yeah. So, you know, when you think about yield farming, it's, uh, you know, staking your, uh, your money with certain, uh, with certain tokens to get a certain amount of APY. And the, the risk there comes not from market loss, but from just like the untestedness of the asset itself. Right. And so if somebody's coming to Quantbase and wants that, like, wants like a percentage of APY without any chance of loss, uh, like any chance of market loss, that is something we're, we're looking to offer soon. Awesome. But, you know, with the idea that like, it is still high risk, but it's, it's high risk in a different way. Yep. Sweet, sweet. Well, honestly, that's all of the questions that we have. Um, I just wanted to say thank you guys for taking the time to talk to our audience and everything. Let them know about what you're building, what you're doing. Um, really excited to watch what quant base does over the next few years yeah i appreciate it Thank you so much for having us um yeah just check out get quant base uh and you know look forward to hear what y'all think about the platform so thank you so much for having oh us. also um if anybody wanted to get in contact with you how should they reach out what's the best way hello at get quantbase.com we're also active on twitter just quantbase underscore um yeah Ooh, thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I had a great time. Um, was there anything you want to add? Or? No, it's been awesome. You guys are building something pretty cool. So you guys keep up the great work. Appreciate you guys answering all the questions, and we'll, um, we'll be in touch. All right. Thank Sweet. you all so much. All right. See you guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, guys. <laughs> thank you.